Ahead of governorship elections in Lagos State, we address issues arising from candidacy and choice of various political parties. And the Lagos Police Force issues strong warning ahead of March 11 governorship election. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgu Agaji. The Lagos State Police Command has vowed to prosecute people spreading fake news and provocative uh, content on social media with the intent of causing panic in the state. The spokesman of the command, Benjamin Hundayin, stated this on Monday. Hundayin was reacting to the increase in the level of propaganda and inciting ethnic st statements among social media users ahead of the March 11 gubernatorial election. He also revealed that the police in the state have begun investigation into related cases with the aim of prosecuting those found guilty. Also, the former governor of Ogun State has appealed to Lagos residents of Igbo extraction not to make the state's gubernatorial election an ethnic issue. He described Lagos as the most liberal state in this country and appealed to the Igbo people that he described as our brothers and sisters in Lagos to sustain the relationship. Since Peter Obi, candidate of the Labour Party, defeated Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress in Lagos during the presidential election, the heat of ethnic nationalism has increased between some of the state's Yoruba and Igbo residents, and social media has been awash with ethnic slurs as residents count down to the governorship election build for March 11. Joining us to discuss this is Benga Ogunleye, spokesperson to the Lagos PDP governorship candidate Akin also, Akin Alaoye, a concerned citizen and member of the Labour Party, and Adeboye, Adebayo rather, Adedosu, uh, Assistant Director of Diaspora Mobilization and Allied Matters of your state, APCPCC, uh, joining us to discuss all this. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, joining us this evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, so, I understand. Thank you for joining us. I understand Akin Alaoye will be joining a little bit later, but now we are here with Benga Ogunleye, spokesperson of the PDP candidate Abdulaziz Olajide Adedurong, whom we all know as Jando, and also Adebayo Adedosu, Assistant Director of Diaspora Mobilization and Allied Matters of Oyo State, APC, PCC, and Governorship Campaign Council. Okay, um, let me begin with... Uh, uh, the PDP, uh, the protests will continue for a very long time. Those were the words of Atiku Abubakar, who uh, mobilized other PDP chieftains to Abuja to protest the election that was held on the 25th of February 2023. Now, the question I've always asked is that, why concentrate on a protest when you have a governorship election coming up? How do you intend to combine the two, protesting and then mobilizing people to vote for the governorship? Or have you ruled out the possibility that governorship could also be uh, something that you will gain from? Mr. Ogunleye, I'm asking you, and I said I'll start with the PDP. Oh, all right. Thank you very much, and um, I appreciate you for having me. Uh, well, straight to the point, uh, the ongoing protest is uh, taking place at Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, and not across the 36 states uh, of the Federation. Uh, invariably, the, the elections will be holding in maybe about 20-plus 20, uh, 20 uh, states across the country, and not at the FCT. Um, the People's Democratic Party as a law-abiding uh, political party with huge respect for the judiciary has done the needful by proceeding to the court as regards the outcome of the presidential and the National Assembly election. But for the gubernatorial elections and the state assembly elections that are to hold this Saturday 11th March, we are prosecuting that in all the states that will be uh, where, where we'll be having the elections. So it has nothing to do with the protest. And as the presidential candidate of our party has rightly said, and that's the Vice President uh, 
Atiku Abubakar. The need for the protest is to let the people know that the People's Democratic Party is not sitting on his ass or, or resting on his ass as regards this, uh, the outcome of the election. And the need to let INEC know the position of the party. This is within the ambit of the law. This is allowed by the law. And over and over again, the, uh, the party leadership made it known to Nigerians that no, we are not calling for a uh, rancorous protest. This is a lawful, peaceful protest to register the reservation of the leadership of the party as far as the outcome of the election and the shabby uh, uh, action of the Independent National Electoral Commission as regards the election is concerned. So we are focused on the state election in Lagos State. We are committed to the election and we are looking forward waiting to coast to victory as we approach the election. So it does not affect our preparedness for the state election in any way. Okay. But, okay, let me, let me come to you, Bayo. Um, he has just said why they are protesting and that it's not going to uh, affect the local elections in the states and all that. But to protest at the national level shows that there was something wrong with the process. And because of that, the confidence of the people in a very transparent process may be eroded a little bit and it might affect the elections coming up on Saturday. What is your response to the protest carry out, carried out by the PDP itself and how you think it's is going to affect the elections of Saturday. Bio. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you very much. You can actually see that I was laughing to myself because it is just so insane and out of sync that a party that lost an election already is at the tribunal challenging the outcome of the elections. Now deemed it fit to take to the streets. That simply means you are taking laws into your hands. You cannot be at the tribunal and also be on the street at the same time. That can only be PDP. We know they are stuck in trade. The same thing happened in 2019 when they were when they put themselves on some carriage and drove around the streets of Abuja. So it is not anything new. It simply tells you the caliber of people who are in PDP. Men of integrity, law-abiding people, Democrats, real Democrats, will never go the way of the PDP. I don't see anywhere in the world you lose an election, you petition for the result of the election to be reviewed, and at the same time you are taken to the streets. It seems as if we like to take the laws into our hands and turn the laws on its head. It's not done that way. When... Donald Trump had a problem with the election that brought in Joe Biden. He went to the court, and within a twinkle of an eye, all the courts in the country were throwing out his petitions. And we know what happened when he tried with the June 6th insurgency attack on the Capitol Hill, how they are being treated. Some of them have just been sentenced to jail terms. It is only in Nigeria where legality becomes illegality. And illegality becomes legality. And I'm so, I'm so perturbed that those who call themselves Democrats, of course we know they are not, they are not Democrats. We know the only thing they are fighting for is survival of the self. But, but Bayo, self is, is that comparison a really, a really fair comparison? Because in the capital uh, protest, there was real, really uh, a lot of violence. And so many things were destroyed. This one is a peaceful uh, protest that okay, is being carried out. No, no, and no, no, secondly, no, no, no. secondly, Bayo, as you're answering, secondly, you said within a twinkle of an eye, all the petitions that Trump brought before the courts were thrown out because they really actually sat. Do you trust the same uh, to happen in the judicial system of Nigeria, that whatever you take to the courts, if you just leave it to the courts, you will have speedy judgment? Now you are trying to debate me. You are not trying to ask me questions. Let us limit it to questions. Okay? The other time when you were talking, you did not interject the way you are interjecting. Let me uh, ask questions. And let no, me no, ask. no, no, no. If I'm not clear about the thing, on. I have to ask you. Hold you you cannot run that. away from it. Hold on, hold on. I'm coming to that. It is you and I mm. that cause distrust of the judiciary. And it is people 
like PDP element, like people in PDP. When I say you and I, I'm not talking about you in person. I'm talking about the average Nigerian, about our people. It is only when it pays us that the democracy is, the democracy is flourishing. The moment we don't get the results we anticipate, we say democracy, democracy is under attack, democracy is under a siege. The laws are clear. If you have a case and you are able to prove, prove your case beyond every reasonable doubt, then the court will do the needful. And when you're talking about peaceful protest and violent protest, let me distinguish. A peaceful protest can also be a violent protest. The moment your right to demonstrate, okay, impedes or infringes on my right to free movement, is no longer taken to be, to be peaceful. Because at that point in time, I'm constrained. In the exercise of your own right, you are constraining me. I can no longer be said to be peaceful. A pe I can assure you, in the Western world, like for example in Canada, if you want to protest in Canada, particularly Toronto, you go to Dundas West, D Dundas Park, and the police, you get a permit. There is a popular time. By 4 o'clock, the police will come and tell to keep it moving. You are not going to be allowed to block the roads. You are not going to be allowed to impede the movement of other law-abiding people, or law-abiding citizens. When you take to the street, you, are, you impede the movement of peop other people who are not in line with you. You are not peaceful. Don't let us get it. Don't let us. It is not when people start throwing things, start vandalizing things, that we say it is not, it, it is a violent protest. No. You are in contravention of other people's rights. That mm. is not peaceful. When you want to do a peaceful protest, do it in such a way, gather at your party secretariat, restrict yourself to a place where other people who are not in tune with you will not be affected. And let us not start casting, casting as passion on the judiciary when the case has not even opened up. They are still in the preliminary stages of the tribunal. Why are we already saying do we have confidence in the judiciary? Do I even have confidence in the media as well? I do not. Hmm. So that is the same thing. When you seem we to have taken to the fight back to me. <laughs> hold on, hold on. When we begin to campaign against the process, we are taking credibility away from the process. The question you have asked me is trying to take credibility away from the process, credibility away from the judiciary, and it is not right. It is very unfair. We are not there yet. Don't let us go there. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, let it not sound like I am attacking you, but whenever you say something and I'm not really clear, or I have something to give you as an example, I will have to cut you short and then tell you what I feel. You see, when you say that a peaceful protest becomes a violent protest when you have obstructed some people, I'm just thinking about 2014 when Nigeria was occupied and the APC was going to the streets and making sure that their voices were heard. So I am not seeing that as a, a different thing from what is happening right now. But if you have called this one a violent protest, and we should leave it at that, uh, well, let's keep it. But we'll come to the specifics. See, I said we'll come to the specifics of these things that we are talking are about. That's what I said earlier. You are debating because you are also taking a position. Any protest whatsoever yeah. that impedes on the rights of other people yeah. and not be, because they are not throwing sticks, they are not fighting. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. mentioning the protests that have done and that I, I, from 2014. And there have been other protests, if you want to make it about party, then as at that, what, what year did you quote? What year did APC come into existence? Nigerians, not APC. Nigerians, it's not APC. So don't let us do that. Okay. See? That's well, what I'm saying don't take a position. If we, we have need to, to return to that, we will return to that. But um, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we have to pursue other other uh, uh, concerns. Uh, let me come back to you, Mr. Ogunleye. Um, we just want to get out some of the things that are, are out there that people are talking out of the way, so that you can uh, you can um, you can deny or accept that these things are happening because. It is because you are making them happen or not, so that people will debunk some, some of the things that uh, may be false out there. First of all, 
We have heard your principal, the, the uh, governorship candidate of the PDP, saying that there cannot be an alliance at all uh, with any other party, especially like the Labour Party, which we heard some rumours that you may be having an alliance because it is now the opposition and if opposition versus the uh, incumbent. And your principal came out to say that to have an alliance with the Labour Party is like sitting on a keg of gunpowder. We need to understand what he really meant by saying sitting on a keg of gunpowder if he goes into an alliance with uh, another very formidable opposition party. Mr. Ogunle, well, please. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, uh, what the party candidate, our governorship candidate, Dr. Nabdelaziz, or Lajida Adibiron, actually referred to is that um, the Labour Party in Lagos State, as of now, still have a lot of contentions regarding the candidacy of their governorship, uh, the standard bearer. Um, of course, it is a public knowledge that um, issues were being raised on the eligibility of uh, the candidate to have uh, uh, contested in the primary elections, uh, not being a member of the party for more than one month before the primary elections. These are issues within the party. And of course, it's, uh, it could be uh, a sort of a, a, a keg of gunpowder waiting for... Mr. Gwing uh, Gunleye, we don't seem to have your audio. Okay, um, as soon as we can get his audio back, we will... Uh, we will... Hello, can you hear me? Okay, we can hear you, please. Oh, all right, yes. The, the candidate of the Labour Party, as we know, uh, Mr. Gadebo, Ms. Gadebo, asks issues, contentions within the party because there's another individual within the party who also lay claim to be the authentic uh, gubernatorial candidate of the party. And you know, it's a, a, a litigation issue that they are still pursuing so, within the party. So without those bandages, were you considering an alliance? Oh, oh, of course. We are not going straight into alliance with the Labour Party as of now. Okay. However, the PDP is open in, to other political parties, okay. not only the Labour Party. Of course, we have close to uh, about 13 uh a political party standing for election in this March 11 global election in Lagos State. Okay. We are open. Members of the Labour Party as of today are already identifying with the PDP. We are only talking about the candidate himself. Mm. The candidate himself has internal issue within the party to resolve. And it has nothing to do with us. And we will not want to get into it. Okay. We do not want to be involved in that internal issue of the Labour Party. Okay. For as many members of the Labour Party in Lagos State who are willing, who are out there to support in dislodging the women that have held the state by the jugular over the 24 years, of course, are, 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 we are hoping to welcome them and work with them Okay. And Lagos State. okay, we are expecting Akin uh, Olaoye to join us later. He's of the Labour Party and we're hoping that he can answer some of the questions that you have raised, some of the concerns you have raised, why this alliance cannot go. So let me just go to Mr. Adedosu right now. Um, the APC, uh, it's also said that the campaign of the APC is ethnic-based recently, that some people... Are threatening some other people and they are campaigning based on the fact of uh, or doubting the legitimacy of some of the candidates that are contesting the governorship election here in Lagos and saying that people should not vote for them based on that and not talking about the issues. I'd like you to confirm this or debunk this or distance yourself from whatever campaign is based on ethnicity in Lagos, because that is what is on the social media and everywhere else. Thank you very much for that question. You said legitimacy. Yes. I want you to put it in context properly, because I, when you say legitimacy, uh, Benga just raised issue about the legitimacy of the candidacy 
of the Labour Party, Party candidate presently parading himself. That is legitimacy. So when you're talking about legitimacy, you see, what are you referring to? Are you referring to what you just answered? I don't know. Because what you said about legitimacy is loose. Probably if you could close it up, I'll be able to answer it directly. Yeah, I started by saying it is based mostly on ethnic sentiments. And whatever legitimacy I'm talking about is based on ethnic sentiments. And people are now um, identifying APC's campaign with ethnic sentiments and saying that some of these uh, contestants are not even Lagosians. They are from different ethnic groups and all that. That is the legitimacy I'm talking about. Not because he couldn't buy a form or anything. That is what I'm talking about. Is the APC basing their campaign on that or not? Okay, I think now I understand where you're coming from. What you're trying to say is, probably you can identify the particular candidate and I can give you a straight answer. I Because I don't like to speak in general. Labour Party. Okay, Labour. Okay, you're talking about the Labour Party candidate. Good. It's good that you have identified it that way. And one thing about me, I tell people, I don't work on essays. I don't go by what people say on social media. As long as I don't hear it directly from the campaign of APC, it is inconsequential. Let, let, me, let me put it differently. There are videos of people who are known chieftains of the APC threatening some people. And that is what I just wanted to give you the opportunity to either distance yourself or confirm that you gave the go-ahead okay. as an APC. Okay. Simple. I, 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 I think you're trying to steer the honestness, and I will, I will oblige you if you want us to go there. Okay? We are not oblivious of the way supporters of Labour Party in Lagos State have been making claims to so many things that they want to take over Lagos. It is their right. They have the power to take over Lagos. And except you want to be insincere to yourself, that you say this is not something that is scary, that the only reason why they are supporting the candidates is because they believe he has close affinity or affiliation to a particular tribe that they have identified him with a particular tribe and as such they are going all out to support him prior to, to prior to last week's election everybody knew him as badebo rose viva right after within a within a short while chinedu came out the chinedu chinedu it's not as if he doesn't bear the chinedu the Chinedu came out to whip up ethnic sentiment. And I can play to you right now so many space, Twitter space events and all the things that have been said against the Yoruba people, particularly against people from Lagos State. I'm a Yoruba man. And when you when I when you begin to poke your hands into my eyes, I'll be forced to push back however I can. I'm not aware of any APC stalwart. I've not seen the video. I'm not going to comment on what I've not seen. You have seen it. I've not seen it. I won't comment on what I've not seen. I only comment on what I've seen, even to the point that the wife of Badebo refer to Ibadan people in the most atrocious manner, which I will quickly show to Ross. I was offended as a young man. I was offended as an Ibadan person that somebody could describe my people as guinea pig. That's what she said about Ibadan. Mr. Adedosu. Uh, uh, the Labour Party um, uh, chieftain is not here or member is not here. But it, the question is simple. If the question is simple, whether you have seen the videos or not, these utterances of the people who are linked to your party, let me use it that way, 
is it the stand of the APC or it is not? If you say it's not the stand of the APC, we leave it at that. But if you start it's giving me instances it's where you are insulted, you. it is implying yeah. something else. So I said is it to you that I, I said to you I cannot comment on what I have not personally seen. Okay. I don't hold opinion on okay. what I've not seen. So okay. you cannot ask me to comment on what I've not seen. But if you can see this, this is it where he said he supported IPOP to a point. And that is somebody that wants to rule Lagos. That is somebody that wants to be an administrator to rule over different tribes in Nigeria, in, in Lagos. So you and felt insulted. Know. Okay. Okay. That is, that is just from, that is him saying that. But his wife, who will now be the wife of the governor, referred to him about my people in the most despicable manner. And it is also on record that himself has been making some very outlandish statements. As okay. Okay. But this guy is not here to defend him, so I won't go deep into Okay, that. Mr. Agunleye. Mr. Agunleye. I don't know anything about that. Okay, Mr. Agunleye. Uh, yes. Thank you. Let's, let's not make it... Let me not make it like um, it's a tribal thing. So let's drop that. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that you've said that you didn't see that. And you didn't seem to uh, say that it is the stand of your party. And I respect that. So I leave that. Let's go to general matters. But before the general matters that we are going to discuss about the coming election and others, we need to take a short break. And after that break, we'll go into specifics of what Saturday is supposed to look like and other things. You're welcome back. We're still here and it's Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. I'm here with uh, Benga Ogunle, a spokesperson to the Lagos PDP governorship candidate. I am also uh, here with uh, Adebayo Adedosu, Assistant Director, Diaspora Mobilization and Allied Matters of Oyo State APC PPC, or PCC rather. Uh, gentlemen, uh, let me begin with uh, what has happened. Uh, reactions, your reactions to the court order to use beavers to transmit results uh, of the election of Saturday. I'd like to get your individual reactions to this. Let me start with uh, you, uh, Mr. Adebayo. Anyways, uh, there's something fundamental that we need to get right about the beavers upload or transmission of the results. For you to transmit a result, there needs to be a collision at different centers, that is at the polling units. Mm. And collision is done manually. The most important and the most significant of all this process is the collision at the polling unit and its documentation. Mm. The documentation in the sense that it's been registered or entered into the relevant INEC forms and signed by each party agent. You cannot just count the result of the election without it being documented. You need to document it. All the party agents available around to assign, to sign, to sign off on, on it. That is a legal document. That is a primary legal document. Because if what is transmitted at the end of the day into the beavers, does not tally with what was signed off on, then there is an issue. So people keep talking about transmission, transmission. Where do you transmit from? You transmit from a manual process into the beavers. And let's ask ourselves. I had so many reports about how INEX personnel have to be using their own data to run the beavers, to run the accreditation process during voting. The error is not about party. It's not has nothing to do with the, with the different parties. It is INEC. Why is it so difficult for INEC to have the right bandwidth for all the gadgets they were they are deploying for these elections uh, in this election cycle? Yeah. To the to the point that 
their polling unit, their the, the election officers have to be using their mobile hotspot to actually run the system. Which simply means if we have technology issue, the transmission will not be smooth, will be hampered. That is why I believe in a case like this, the most significant for everybody to note is the documentation of this report on the right INEC document signed off and everybody at the polling unit should be allowed to take snapshots of the result sheet. When everybody has the same result sheet signed off on, at any given time, it can be uploaded because the uploading will come from a manner process. It's, I don't understand. We are not voting electronically. It's a different thing if we are voting electronically. And we also have it on good records by INEC itself that within 72 hours, its database was attacked 166 times, which simply means some people had, re had already prepared results that they wanted to transmit. And how does it happen? I'm an IT consultant. I, will, I am actually a biometric consultant. So I know how this thing works. In the course of the transmission of the results, what the hackers were trying to do is they will block the transmission that is coming in from INEC. Their own will now override that of INEC and now will be uploaded, not knowing the different layers of security that INEC has in place. It is as a result of these attacks that INEC could not upload. Yeah, but INEC doesn't accept the fact that they were being attacked until afterwards. When they were asked no, whether it was attacked, they, did, they said it was not attacked. The observer was still on. Rem, uh, my brother, remember before, even before the election, the INEC chairman came out to address Nigerians that they were being attacked from Paris, from France, from Russia, from everywhere. They were seeing all kinds of attempts to hack INEC. And it did not stop into the election, which simply means those who are crying foul have challenged some people that, okay, give me the results from your polling units, if you have it. Let us go to IREM. Those crying wolf that the results were changed and all that. Don't, don't even know how to use the IREF to check results. Okay. Somebody was telling me, oh, I didn't take my phone to the polling unit. I'm just like so convenient. It is not so convenient for you to say you didn't take your phone to the, so you don't have the result. And those who have the results, people have been going there. There was even a thread on Twitter of a man, I can't remember his name. He's in Lagos. He lives in Lekki area. And said he went, he, he, he pulled result from 12 different polling units that he had the result. He went into IREF and everything tallied. That everything tallied. That okay. the process I'm talking about. Okay, let me also get the the, the, the response from uh, uh, Ogunleye. What is your reaction to, to this order that has, been, that has been given by the courts to INEC to upload results from the polling units? With that be well, fast. well, thank you so much. Um, I almost took uh, Mr. Debayo or the spokesperson of INEC. He did a good job in defending the INEC as regards the shab shabby performance uh, we had at the presidential election. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, all right. Yeah. What the electoral law proceeded uh, is that transmission of the result after all the processes of documentation is done by taking a picture of the result sheet uploaded onto the beavers and transmitted. Now, the importance of this is exactly what um, Mr. Debayo is uh, failing to consider. In a situation where the result being presented by either of the political parties or any of the political parties do not tally it then whatever has been transmitted or uploaded on the beavers will be the authentic result now take for instance if 
any of the political party claim that there is such shit within has been tampered with. Agree with the, the, the original copy that was with INEC. The only document that will stand as a medium of, of check, that will stand as the most authentic document, is the document that was uploaded and transmitted in the presence of all the party agents at the polling unit. And this is the significant difference between the 2023 election and 2019. Take away the transmission and uploading of results at the polling unit. Yes, in, in a nutshell, Mr. Ogunleye, in a nutshell, does it give you more confidence that the uh, governorship election will be better than the presidential election? That's my concern. Still ongoing. And the INEC has come up to promise, because they overpromised at the presidential election and underperformed. Now, INEC chairman has come to promise again that the beavers will be active, translation of the results will be done at the polling unit. Of okay. course, we are going to go along and, and, and expect that this will be done. Okay. Only that our party agents will be sure. Sure. Oh, Okay, okay, thank, thank you. I have, sorry, I have, I have had, just, just a moment, gentlemen, sorry. just a moment. No, we, sorry, quick we, we have so much to cover, so just a moment. Let me, let me ask on, this. On this particular issue, give me 10 seconds. Uh, bio, the just, of the position of the law is rather something we should run away from. In August, August of last year, INEC chairman specifically came out to say collation will be done manually. It's all over the news. So when you now said I sounded more like a sp the spokesman of INEG, it's simply because you are coming from a position of ignorance. And I don't do emotions. I do on the basis of the law. And what is but, proper... But, 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 we, we are not talking so, about your opinion. Why are you yes. telling no, no, me? We are not talking about your opinion. Not, 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 not your opinion. Hello. Don't, start, don't, try, don't try to sound smart. By no, saying no, as, no, 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 no. I was only telling you the position of the law and what the electoral what act is said. It? What is Hold the position on. of the law? It's been that the, let that me that educate you on what you don't know. No, no, no. Let me no. educate don't you educate. on what no, no, don't bother. you don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. No, 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 no don't bother. Speak to what I have said. Hello, hello, speak to what I have said. cannot go with this ignorance and Okay, gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, I was trying to, to weigh your level of confidence in the next election, but um, let's not go too far. For On the one hand, it seems... You are just speaking about your... You can hold any opinion you have. Uh, saying that gentlemen, gentlemen, we have so much to cover. Just a moment. Bio and Benga. Is that wrong? This one is not supported by law. Bio, Benga, Bio and Benga, just a moment. We will be uploaded at the polling unit. It is empowered. Position. When you are empowered, it simply means you reserve the right. Okay, gentlemen, can you hear me? Gentlemen, can you hear me? Please. Speak to the issue. Please, please. Uh, we have we have talked about this, and we had so many to co uh, so many things to cover. We still have so many things to cover. If we can be brief now, we can uh, cover some of these areas. I, I would have loved to know some cardinal points uh, in the manifesto, uh, how to make Lagos better than it is now. Uh, but I wanted to get some of these things out of the way before we get into that. And as it is, we may not have time to do that uh, so much. But this one, as quickly as you can. Um, INEC has asked that uh, the court order giving um, the PDP and Labour Party the leeway to, to inspect the election materials, including the BVARs, might not be very good for them if they have to carry out the election of Saturday. And some IT experts have come up to say that if they do that, they're going to tamper with some of the evidences. So instead of tampering with the evidences, they should postpone the election. If this happens, I'd like to know what your reaction would be. Let me start with you, Mr. Ogunleye. What would your reaction you, be? What will the reaction so of your party thank, thank you be so if the election much. is postponed? Okay, thank you so much. Very briefly, please. Uh, 
I do not expect that INEC will be this shabby uh, about the preparation for the election, considering the volume of uh, money that has been spent on the process. I expect INEC to envisage, because normally there will be litigation issue after any election. It is not uh, uh, cast in stone. It is not expected that all the political party will agree with the result of the election. So if the INEC has not made provision to allow the protection of the evidence is the result of the first election, before we move to the second one, then it is very unfortunate. Very, very, very unfortunate. What the INEC should have uh, brought to the Court of Appeal is the assurance that recalibrating or working on the Beavers machine will have no effect on the result of the presidential and the National Assembly election. That would have been the wish that would have been enough the Court of Appeal to grant the, the prayer of INEC. But if you will go ahead to tamper with the result that are still being contended So, in a nutshell, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, would you rather have them postpone the elections than tamper with the evidence? Of course, it will be better in the interest of the country. In the interest Excuse of the country, then it will be better we protect the integrity of the result of the last election so that the judiciary can do the needful. You share the same sentiments, Mr. Adedosu. Can you rephrase it? <coughs> I'm asking if by chance, because people are protesting that INEC should not temper with the beavers machines and so temper with the evidences inside the beavers machine just because they want to conduct election on Saturday. So instead of tempering with these evidences that they think they can have in the beavers, it should be postponed. What would be your reaction if it gets to the point where the election for Saturday is postponed? There is no, there is no reason for any postponement because the last election that was held, everything that was used that was that passed through beavers have already been downloaded. They don't reside that they still carry it around. They, because the essence of uploading something is to be <coughs> downloaded. That is science. That is technology. So all the data that were you co collected during the presidential election have already been down, would have been downloaded into a database. I cannot say that they are preserving those ones so they are still in the system. It will interfere with the state election. I don't see how that will happen. I don't buy into that logic. Except INEC has issue with their technology, they should tell us now. They've had two weeks to prepare for this governorship election. And like I just said now, every, every data used or collected during the presidential election ought to have been downloaded into a database that is secure and can be further downloaded for litigation. So the idea of having to postpone an election or not, I don't see how that will fly. I don't see any reason for that if there is no anki panky from any quarters. And the good thing is, this is not talking about Lagos election alone. So nobody will say I'm talking for INEC like I'm the spokesperson of INEC. This has nothing to this is not about Lagos State election that Gwinga will begin to Vent, uh, ventilate over that. Hey, uh, they want to take our vote away. Calm down. This is about Nigeria. No reason whatsoever. If we had election in Oshun State and they were able to use the same beavers for the presidential election, we had election, governorship election in Oshun State, and they were able to use the same beavers for the presidential election in Oshun State. I don't see how that, how that is a problem. There is what is called calibration. The system, the, the gadgets will be calibrated after they, down, they have downloaded all the data that resided in it up till after the election. So I don't, I don't buy into anybody saying that. To me, I take it as a Bia Palo talk.
Negotians and Nigerians, as the uh, next election approaches, uh, just very, very briefly, so that we can also give a time to Mr. Ogunleye to speak to the people of Nigeria as well. Bio, that's you. 30 seconds. Sorry, I didn't hear you because it cut out not right there. Okay, 30 seconds. Just, uh, just speak to Nigerians and Lagosians in particular um, as the next election approaches. Now this is the time for Lagosians and Nigerians in particular, but I'm focusing on Lagos. Stability, competence, achievement is not something you buy on the street. It's not something you pick along the road. It is to be proven within time and time over. You need a trusted and a trusted and somebody who has been there through thick and okay. thin. That public sector gone. experience and private sector experience, and that person is Jide Sonwolu. Jide Sonwolu has been there okay. for people. 30 minutes is gone. You've made your point. At the IGR of Lagos State, and that is why they are interested okay. in Alausa. That Thank is not you. the case. We Thank need you. stability in Lagos. We need people with track record. We are not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I thought you were going to speak generally. Uh, Mr. Ogunleye, please, very briefly, uh, speak to Lagosians and Nigerians. Very, very briefly, because our time is up. Lagosians, Lagosians have endured the APC led government for about 24 years. And I mean 24 because it has been the same set of people from AD, AC, ACN, okay. and APC. If there will be any miracle, it will have been done now. It's unfortunate that the state of Lagos is like this at a time like this. What we need in Lagos is a truly independent governor who will not be tied to the apron string of any godfather, who can take decisions, who have the will to move this state forward and make Lagos wealthy indeed, who will ensure that the resources of Lagos is not in the pocket of individuals. And that person... Is Dr. Abdulaziz. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I was saying speak to Nigerians and Lagosians. You guys were dropping names. Uh, <laughs> I know. I knew it will happen. But thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Benga Ogunle, a spokesperson to the PDP candidate Abdulaziz Olajide Aderiron, that we know as Jando. Thank you so much for coming on the program. And also, Mr. Adebayo Adedosu, Assistant Director of Diaspora Mobilization and Allied Matters of Oyo State APC, PCC, and Governorship Campaign Council. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show. And as the size of our package tonight, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow.